Welcome to Nugget 202 with Steve Groman, and today we will be talking about dinosaurs. Well, at least they're fossils. In this past Saturday Travel and History Tip, we actually did the fun side of the Fick Museum, found in Oakley, Kansas. But today, we're going to be looking at this through a creationist viewpoint, helping you as you go through different museums that mainly present information from an evolutionary viewpoint. You can enjoy them, but you also need to realize that a lot of the information is incorrect. Everybody needs to look at them with a discerning eye, don't they? Yes, sir. A lot of the fish fossils and dinosaur fossils they have in this museum, I can't say these names, but one of them is supposedly the world's oldest known mosasaur fossil, a 15-foot Zyhactinus audax, and it was prepared by well-known fossil hunter George Sternberg. An extremely rare fossil of a mosasaur skull with its eye socket intact is also on display, and those are the first two things that we went to. And we have uh, quite a few mosasaur teeth, don't we? Yes, we do. We've Pe- dug some up, too. We've dug some up, and people love those things, but these were uh, definitely creatures. I'm not sure you could call them dinosaurs, but they're always listed with the dinosaurs because everything back in that time frame that they claim everything was is dinosaur era. So that's what they call them, dinosaurs, but technically they're not really dinosaurs. But it can't be the world's oldest. Well, he could have been older than the other fish that died, but they all died at the same time, and they lived right. contemporaneously. <laughs> right, they all lived the same time. They were kinfolk, no doubt. <laughs> and this is the fossil that had the intact eye socket. It is a rare thing. It does happen, but it is a very rare thing. I've talked about it many times, but teeth and bones and claws and things like that, they will last a while. But when you have delicate structure of anything, that verifies it was a rapid thing, a rapid event that took place. That's just a beautiful fossil. It really it's is. It's incredible. It really is. They say on the sign here that mosasaurs are extinct marine reptiles that lived approximately 100 to 64 million years ago. Well, that's quite a range, isn't it? That's quite a range. It falls within that dinosaur era time frame, so that's kind of why they put them there. And this one, they're calling them a reptile, but that's what the word dinosaur means. And this is one of your favorite Terrible lines. Reptile. Their closest living relatives are the monitor lizards, such as the Komodo dragon. The first one to be discovered was found in a chalk quarry in Holland in 1770. Thus, the discovery and study of mosasaurs predated the discovery of dinosaurs by more than 50 years. Mosasaur fossils are found all over the world, but a large number of complete specimens have been found in the Smoky Hill Chalk and Pier Shale members of the Niobrara Formation of Western Kansas. We actually went on a dinosaur tour, a dinosaur dig in West Texas. We went to the dinosaur site, but we didn't we didn't dig in it. It was a lot of fun. We went with the pastor and his family. We had toured Big Bend and then went past Terlingua to Study Butte and went to this dinosaur preparation museum. And the gentleman took us outside and showed us where they had some in situ still that they were digging up and it was really quite yes. awesome. And you want to tell them where, where we were taken in Del Rio? Yeah, we were actually in Del Rio, Texas. Somebody asked us if we want to go fossil hunting. We said, sure. So they took us to the city dump. Yeah, it was quite exciting, wasn't it? It's was like, <laughs> and okay. it, really, it really is built on just tons of fossils. So we were digging fossils in the dump. It was kind of interesting. We've gone to dumps to see bear. We did. We have done but, that. And we, we actually, there was rattlesnake in that thing too. Remember that? was crazy. In the museum, they do have this collage of photographs of when Sternberg and others have dug up the fossils in the Smoky Hills. You can see monument rocks in some of these pictures and last week's Saturday Travel and History Tip was on monument rocks. These Badland features are beautiful. Yeah, they're really amazing too. They just jut right up out of there. George Sternberg says, the bones of plesiosaurs are by no means common and even so little as a paddle is rarely found. These bones are in remarkable state of preservation. It is doubtful if another plesiosaur paddle in which the bones were associated has ever been found in Kansas chalk beds. Note the scars on the large bones, the humerus, which were evidently made by one of the carnivorous mosasaurs, a rare specimen. There were two types of plesiosaurs, the long neck and the short neck. The slender neck of the long neck was extremely flexible and was used to gather food. The head the head of the long neck had a small skull with long interlocking teeth. The short neck had a longer, more slender skull with short needle-like teeth. The short neck was probably a very fast swimmer, but both types had large eyes and were probably day hunters. The front paddle of the long neck plesiosaur was found by George Sternberg. It is depicted in its life form in the mural Processions of the Prairie.
itinerary. You know, one thing well, that's I was, a mouthful trying to talk mouthful like of, some old timer. Like these old timer guys, yeah. Because the thing had a long neck, didn't mean it did this, that, or another thing. Because it had a short neck, didn't mean it did this, that, or another thing. Nobody knows for sure why and how they used their body parts that they had. They just it's all conjecture. It may well be true, but there's no way to verify it. It's not really a science issue. It's just okay. One had a long neck, one had a short neck. And he's talking about the scarring here. I doubt it was the carnivorous mosasaur because pre-flood all animals were vegetarian and they would not have attacked each other. So that is incorrect. These did die during the flood. There he could got have been damaged. Panic. Well, there yes, could have been could panic have when frightened and... the fear and the dread is now instilled and all that in chapter nine. But yes, it was not his millions of years ago. And the scarring probably Correct. occurred during his quick demise right. at the flood. Right. So again, we can see the fossil. We can enjoy the fossil. We can see where it's found. The scenario and the timing is more likely wrong. But not only do we need to know and realize that it's wrong, we need to know what's the more likely event and what really happened. Correct. Once again, we have a mechanism to explain to us thousands of years ago, and you can see the evidence. And these are pictures of the beautiful monument rocks and the chalk cliffs, and you can see the strata layers, and the, they're just simply beautiful. Yes, they are. Well, at least to Fascinating place to go to. Another fabulous fossil that they had there was this cluster of crinoids. They say their currently living species are sea lilies. Well, isn't that convenient? Yes. Everything has something current and, cont- <laughs> right. and, and that we're living in now because it's the same thing. Because it's just it is the same flood. thing. It may be a little different because it's smaller or just different issues because of its habitat and what it eats, but it's the same thing. Right. They are named for their resemblance to the flower. Crinoids are not uncommon in the Kansas chalk in Logan County. This piece was found about 26 miles south of Oakley, and that's where we go to go to Monument Rocks. This small slab is part of a large colony of extinct crinoids having 26 heads present in this section. It's beautiful, and it shows a catastrophe, doesn't it? It really does show a catastrophe. And a crinoid, a sea lily, that is a delicate item in the ocean. Right. People could say, well, that was already underwater, and that's that's true, but a lot of things with even flesh and intestines and all kinds of things have been preserved as well, which just, once again, verifies it is a rapid event that takes place. Right. And they were buried rapidly and petrified rapidly to get the incredible detail. There is no right. other mechanism that makes sense except for Noah's flood. So when you see a catastrophe fossil, that is just verification of Noah's flood and a rapid demise. And a, a disastrous rapid demise. And the other fossil that caught my eye is, I don't know why I even try and say these names, but do you know how to say this thing? <laughs> yeah, Zyphactinus. Well, Zyphactinus to you too. Yeah. Audax? Was not uncommon in the Cretaceous oceans and reached upwards of 16 feet in length. They were very similar to modern day tarpon. Hmm. Being covered with scales and having broad expanded tail. It is thought that from the size of the jaws and the array of teeth that, that they rivaled the smaller mosasaur in strength and possibly the larger mosasaur. It's all just conjecture. Frankly, I'm glad that George Sternberg dug all this stuff up, and it's a shame that he was an evolutionist. 99.9% of these type of people are evolutionists, right. and it's their viewpoint, and it's what they know. It's what they believe. But we certainly have enjoyed many of his fossils. It's similar to modern-day tarpon, hmm? probably because it is a pre-flood tarpon, and we have talked before, it probably was was not a predator pre-flood. But it is an incredible fossil to look at. And one thing, they're collected and prepared by George F. Sternberg and Son. We need Christians. We need creationists who get involved and are interested in these kinds of things and set out and do it. The evolutionists have a big grip on this type of thing, but we need to have an understanding and be able to tell people about it also and show them. Well, that's why we're doing what we're doing, is we're trying to point these things out and tell people. And you may not be going to the Fick Museum in Oakley, Kansas. I hope you do. It's really yeah. a, a fun little town. But there's a museum near you that has these types of displays and these types of signage that you need to know how to correct right. with your children and let them understand. This particular skull was found in Gove County, Kansas, in the Cretaceous Chalk of Kansas. And again, it's not Cretaceous period. It's just the Chalk of Kansas. And we know that Chalk was living also. And we get into that in several of our Creation Seminar series in After the Flood, Lesson 4, and Lesson 9, Rock Solid Proof. And again, we had mentioned that we had gone to the Mosasaur Ranch Museum west of Study Butte and they were working on this beautiful sort of crushed Mosasaur head and what did they say? Didn't they say something crazy like he had a brain tumor? Yes. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes I do as a matter of fact. But it's a small I forgot about that, but it's yeah. a small museum it's not really technically a museum it's more of a study research lab and they have some pieces out but if you're ever out in the Big Bend area go check them out because Always check this 
smaller, I call mom and pop shops, but just smaller museums and, and places because more likely than not, they've got some really neat stuff in there. And I do mention this museum in my books off and on the beaten path. And this is in the central edition, which includes Texas, because this is an off and on the beaten path. Fabulous stop. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed your little visit to Oakley, Kansas and the Fick Museum. And you'll be happy when you go by there. Yes, sir. Thank you.